All right, I'm out here in Michigan City having a Starbucks coffee, but I'm gonna go to this record store called Static Age. I haven't been there in about a year, but I remember they had a pretty decent 45 of them. So cheers. All right, I also have to get some shoes, a belt, and a tie for this wedding coming up. So I'm out here at the Michigan City Outlet Store and man, I don't know if anybody really shops at these things anymore, but who knows, maybe I'll get a bargain. Yeah, Michigan City's one of these Midwest towns. It's on Lake Michigan, but it's old and it's run down, but it's gritty and it's got some guts. So I'm gonna check this place out. It's been a while. And last time I was in here, I got a really good Joe Jackson 45 out of their 45 bin. It's called Static Age. It's sort of like a hippie eclectic record store. All right, it's always cool when they buy and sell Zombie Fest. You got that coming up. And it's pretty bizarre little sign there. I like it. Anybody want any free vinyl? Hey, Detroit Bob here. I just walked into this place called Static Age, and I can just tell from the vibe this place is hopping. It's eclectic. And I've been here once before, but it's been a, uh, about a year. And I think I just ran into the owner, Detroit Bob. Casey Mars. Casey, nice to meet you. What what got you into the vinyl business? I, I always had records as a kid. And uh -huh. I spent years, you know, working in craft beer. I was on the road 200 days of the year. And whatever town I went to, I'd go to the local record store and I built a collection. Wow. And uh, and then my wife got into some art. She wanted to sell her art. Okay. It takes a long time to do. So we're like, why not start a record store and then do the art stuff as well? Oh, that is awesome. All right, Detroit Bob, I'm talking to Casey Martin, and this guy was in the craft beer business, and then he just sort of got into vinyl. And Casey, take it from there. What, what, how, how, do, how long have you guys been here? Uh, five and a half years. Wow. You know, I'm like a little kid. I like to say the half. The half always makes it seem it's close to six. <laughs> yeah, you're, you're almost six, almost right? Almost six. Yeah, almost yeah. six now. Yeah. Okay, so what, um, what are your genres that you like and that you personally, and then what else do you find that's really hot and what's selling? Um, we like a little bit of everything. Uh -huh. um, you know, we don't, we're a small store too, but we, we don't set anything up by genre in general. You know, it's all alphabetical. It's easier to find, you know, people can get into the minutia of like subgenre and subgenre. And we, yeah. we don't do that. It's, we just try and keep everything easy to find. But we like a lot of stuff, you know. Most of our stuff is new vinyl. Um, as a small town store, yeah. you know, it's just, we're, we're, we get so much more variety buying from distributors and stuff like that. Otherwise, we'd have the same three or 400 records, you know, right. uh, that people have had in their grandparents' basement or whatever, you know, for, cool. for 40 years. So. Cool. But now, my, yeah, stuff. I mean, I mean I'm, I'm looking around and I'm seeing a lot of good titles just right up front. Uh, my niche is 45s. Do you still have that little 45 bin or did you we get do. rid of that? We do. And okay, cool. I, I will tell you, we're really good at buying you stuff. Yeah. But, you know, we've got to clean them and listen to them. And all yes. Stuff. So we're really slow about getting around, especially because I spent all my time, like, bringing stuff in. Okay. But we do have some 45s on the other side. We've got, like, 10 times as many at home. Right, like, we right. We make it into the store, but I'm one man. I can only do so much. And i got to ask you the name. Is Static Age? Is there something mystical to that? The, is How would you yeah. come up with the name? <laughs> when we were when we were coming up with names, we, we took stuff from bands we liked, you know. Okay. We looked, you know. A line from a Mission of Burma song, or a line from you know a Pavement song, and instead we just took uh, Misfits. Yep. It just seemed to, you know, we we thought about uh, uh, I guess a lot of different things, you know, but but that engage kind of made the most. So sense. so we have a real live Misfits fan right here. Yeah. Okay, yeah. <laughs> that is cool. And we're at what six twenty one Franklin. Six twenty one Franklin. In, that's in Michigan City. Um, it's a great stop if you guys are doing the uh, route from Detroit to Chicago and looking for old records, I would recommend stopping in here. I'm going to bring you through their 45, Ben. Casey, thanks for the interview. Thank you so much. All right. All right, let's see what they got here. Um, you can already tell by the packaging that they've, they've given some thought and some love to their 45s. I mean, I've been crawling around on floors and digging out boxes from under the tables of LPs. But it, this is a small, but it appears to be a very well curated 45 collection, which is sort of nice. Uh, I got Adam Ant in there, just saw him not too long ago. 
See any good shows lately? Me, Vivo at, uh, at the Brew. Oh, really? Yeah, That's Brew. cool. That's one of the ones that I should have saw back in the day and probably had the chance, but I didn't take advantage of it. Yeah, I saw them a few times in festivals, but this was the first chance I had to see them in a small venue that was all their show, an hour and a half, you know, instead of just a 40 minute festival set. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So how, how great at 70 and how yeah. cool they are. Well, still, they got the main lead singer still there, right? I know the drummer died. Yeah. Um, but uh, two mother spas and, and Gerald Stout. Yeah. So. That looks like a reissue of that cheap trick. Yeah, one side is, looks like the craft work. So yeah, yeah, interesting. I saw... Um, so I had a man with um, English Beat down in Indy earlier in the year. So that was cool. And then I got to see Cake out in Iowa. And they were sort of on my list. What's uh, what's hot right now in terms of sales? Uh, you know, I always blank when I get questions like that. I mean, yeah. Obviously, some of the, uh, the big young stars, I mean, Chapel Road, okay. uh, Taylor Swift, you know, we sell a lot of that stuff. But we also, uh, and it just kind of goes first where we'll sell, you know, some Mission of Burma or Modern Lovers or something like that. that right. Things that you or Last week we sold a bunch of spiritualized. And we really sell some, but interesting. It's all kind of stacked up. Yeah, mine started with a jukebox, and I bought this 1963 Rel AMI jukebox, and of course it didn't work, you know. But it was a blessing in disguise because I had to literally take it apart and rebuild it, and I learned how that thing worked. Right. But, you know, the time I was done, I knew from head to toe, so I got it up and running. And in the meantime, I was starting to collect 45s, and I'm like, oh, these are things that are really addictive. Because, you know, you have LPs, which are great. But 45s are, you know, the songs off the LPs, which have their own story, their own memory. Uh, sometimes there's a weird B-side. Sometimes there's, you know, a double hit, you know, A and B, a yeah. twofer, I call them. Um, so I got really got into it. I mean, I still collect LPs, don't get me wrong. But sometimes you, you just lock on, oh, I remember that song, you know. And, uh, yeah, I remember the album, too. But that song was the song... And then fill in the blank, you know what I mean? And I, uh, yeah. I mean, I, I, I get excited. I mean, it's all like Christmas to me. Like, when you get something from distributors or somebody brings in a great collection. Right. It's all really exciting. Or a single, you know. I mean, it feels like Christmas to me. I, I get excited. But again, I'm really bad at it. And I'm bad with the 45s. Cause, you know, to get, to assess value, to really get, you know, to make sure you're paying people the right amount. And right, stuff. right. Uh, it takes as long as an album. So, well, yeah, it, 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 my wife is great with the 45. Yeah, it is, uh, it is uh, daunting. Um, and one guy just said, just start entering your stuff into Discogs right now. And this is when I only had about 200 pieces. Yeah. Now I've got like 10,000. Yeah, if you wait till you have 10,000, it, it is. Yeah. Really. Yeah, I mean, Discogs is a great resource. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, yeah. Uh, do you sell online too or no? We don't. Sometimes yeah. People will, uh, have our... Hi, it, how are you? It, Good. It, it's tedious. Yeah. I've, I've, people I've... will reach out because we, we did start a website during COVID. Right. And they'll see what we have in. So, you know, hey, I'm in Texas. Can we send this stuff? Right, right, right. But, yeah, we, we, just, we try not to monkey with that too much. But we're happy to do it if somebody yeah. finds something that they can't find anywhere else. Well, that's cool. All right. I saw where uh, Sticks was down at the Chicago Theater. 
um, with English beet warming up. I was half tempted to jump in on that one. Another one that I should have saw when I was in London back in 87. Walked past the, the venue and I had a guy offering me tickets and I didn't want to pay it because it was $5 more than what I, you know, now I'm kicking myself 30 years later. English beat with uh, warming up for the sticks, yeah. But, you know, $5 30 years ago was more like Yeah, and, 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 and I, I, I was down to my last dollar. I was literally eating hand to mouth, you know, and uh, ended up seeing Jesus in the Mary chain instead. Oh, that's, I mean. That was pretty good at yeah. the Brixton Academy. So, pick your poison. Um, we got one here that's unmarked. That's Domino. I'll put it in the stack and let you take a look at it. You, uh, from the region originally? Yeah. Born and raised, all right. I keep saying they're supposed to put a train station in or something. How's that going? Good. Uh, I mean, it's largely done. They're now working on the, the parking garage. All right. And they're, I mean, you can see the cones up in the street. They're working on making this a two-way here. And so, yeah. That's cool. Yeah. I mean, I watch people all day long going the wrong way down the street, so it's, you know, <laughs> it's going to be a lot safer. Well, this is a very um, artistic place. So, there you go. <laughs> hey, how are you? Good. What's happening? No, then I still got your stuff, but you're still on this one, so I haven't talked to you yet. So okay. I'm Um, I've got this one, then that one, and then that. Okay. Oh, Just kind of depends on How'd your labor day go? Good. Good. Right? Yeah. That's awesome. Yeah. Man. That's awesome. Yeah. Cool, cool. But yeah, it just depends on, I mean, it's just me, so it depends on how busy oh, yeah, I am. I mean, it looks like. Plugs and stuff, yeah. Because new is always going to be my priority. I think it's most of what we do. Understood. I'll check back with you. But it's all safe. Yeah. yeah. I'll check back with you. I'll about that. Is that enough? Yeah. Cool, man. I mean, there's not that many. So no, there be. no, I appreciate you anyway, so everything else is good, though, huh? Yep. It's hard to get out of here without spending money.
So every year I brought my girls back. They were pottery from the Indians, like the Sioux Indians. Yeah. And they have like a history. They made a paper to tell all about it. So and she's got four or five of them like that. So I love that old stuff like that. And this piece is amazing. That was our first year open. There was a, a local artist. She was in high school. Okay. Like for my senior project, I need to partner with the business. Oh, wow. And I said, do whatever you want since we do mass year round because I just like mass. I think mass are affordable art. Yeah. Um, she made a giant mask. And we used to, we, we have a set of stairs over there, these metal uh -huh. stairs. Uh -huh. that we kept underneath it. We would put our heads in and take pictures. Oh, amazing. Uh, <laughs> it kind of died with COVID a little bit. Right. Yeah. We didn't stick our head in anything. Totally. Right. We didn't encourage, you know. Yeah, exactly. Totally ruined a lot of stuff. Didn't it? <laughs> you know what? Probably people are afraid to put their head back in there. Yeah. But, I mean, they encourage but now wearing I'm a mask. There. I don't know where to put it. Right? Know. That's being very pro. I mean, like, right? They encourage mask wearing. Yeah. That's a mask. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That's right. Hi, <laughs> uh, how are you? Okay, thank you. We do have heavy jewelry and stuff like that, but it's stuff. Um, yeah, but, that person is like that. Yeah, that's not me. But, yeah. but if you just need the class, I mean, there are places, Hobby Lobby, Michael's. Oh, why didn't I think of that? You could get class, yeah. Oh. Okay. You if it's something you can just, yeah, twist on your, yeah, yeah. with that wire. Yeah, yeah. Oh, I don't know Yeah, that's yeah. yeah. being pretty yeah. simple. Yeah, thank you so much. That's if you do need help, I mean, my wife does some of the jewelry, and she can certainly help with that, but. Yeah, you can get Exactly, exactly. Good. Thank you so much. Thank you. I'm sorry I'm not going to get a record today. No, you're fine. <laughs> you are under no obligation. I think that mask is like that double vision mask. Yeah. That thing is the coolest thing ever. Yeah. I mean, it really messes with you when you're looking at it. It does. <laughs> I, I I get freaked out by the fact I don't know it's so freaky, but the eyelashes it's got eyelashes. I know, man. <laughs> it is freaky. It is. Swim Ghoulie's good too. I like that one. Yeah. And obviously some of the masks we have, like Swim Ghoulie, somebody could paint their face and get the hat and recreate that. But I oh, just yeah. like the mask. It's again, so cool. To me, it's just art on our wall. It is. Very cool. Or the terrifier, you can just do that and take your face. But which is that? We are having a party today. Hey, yes. hey. You cranked it up, didn't you? Is it? it no. Oh, it just it sounds really loud. Right but I like it. <laughs> <laughs> Any killer clouds from outer space? Is it? Yeah. Is yeah. that right? Yeah. Oh man. We got a when we opened, we had all the masks. That killer clowns so from, from outer, outer space. space. Yeah, you, you never seen that movie? No. Oh man, it's a cult classic. It's, it's, it's all. It's, uh, God, what's his name? Slim. Oh, Slim. Right yeah. Here, with the red hair. But that's shorty right there. <laughs> that's so cool. Yeah, they what they do is they uh. They wrap you up in a, you know, on their spaceship. They wrap you up in a cocoon, but it's what is it, cotton candy? Kind of oh wow! Yeah, it's. it's and do the, do, and they're all clowns. Yeah, yeah. from outer space. Wow, That's man. What they look like. But it's these great practical effects. I mean, yeah. It's just great. It's what just, year did it come out? Uh, yeah. Oh wow! You gotta check it out. Yeah. Killer clowns from outer space. It's a classic. I mean, there are little kids who come in and know that movie. Yeah, is that right? That's so cool, man. I mean, it has lived on. I must have, must have missed that one. Yeah, that's a good. It's a, it's you know, it's like kind of like um, 
you know, the special effects, you know, back then and now it's so much different though, but it's so cool. It's kind of like I watched the, a buddy of mine had the series, the, what was it, the Night Stalker? Yeah. That, what was the guy's name? Oh, gosh, he was an old character yeah. actor. Yeah. But <laughs> watching that one, like the headless motorcycle guy, you could tell, that, you know, now that I'm older and stuff, yeah. he had shoulder pads on, you know, but he wasn't headless. But, yeah. but I mean, when I was a kid, it was like, oh, my God. Yeah, Night know? Stalker was scary yeah. as hell. Yeah. Gavin, yeah. what was he? Yeah, yeah. Gavin. <sighs> he was in he, he, he was in Psycho. He was the cop in Psycho, and uh, great. There was like a city underneath the street, and it was abandoned and creepy. And he was always going down. Dude, that, that was a good show back there. It was. But he had the whole like box of it. I watched it. it was like so. It was kind of corny now, you know. But I mean, back then, I didn't know the scared shit was. Oh yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, Cold Shack. Cold Shack, yeah. And it was Darren McGavin. Darren McGavin. That's it. McGavin. All right. So what can you do on that little stack there? Take care. All right. Thanks so much. Yeah, man. The one didn't have a price. I think it was the fats. And like I said, I'll try to get you, try to get you some free publicity here. Not that I'm... Uh, Mr. Beast or anything, but yeah. that's another thing that the old ticket stubs have gone sort of, you know, when you're printing them out on a piece of paper or worse yet, they're just digital. You don't get to keep the stub or, you know. Yeah. They were collectible. I'm sure these are shows that you went to, you yeah, or your wife. Were, I yeah. mean, you can still get them sometimes. We get, but you have to ask. And they're not as cool. They yeah. just don't look as cool. But. Yeah. Let me see that, that Devo, right? That's the one you just went to? Yeah. That is sweet. That's sort of a cool stub. Well, yeah, as long as yeah. you can get stub for it. Right. I mean, if they offered it. Yeah. Just, how many times are they going to still be around? Well, I hope they get into the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame because... You know, the Midwest, we don't get a lot of love, you know. Everything's like East Coast or West Coast. and I mean, I'm of the opinion that, that punk, well, punk rock came out of the Midwest in general. But, yeah. I mean, between Detroit and Cleveland, because yeah. I mean, they were Cleveland area, yeah. uh, Rocket from the Tomb yeah. uh, was, I mean, they, Sonic Producer was a Rocket yeah. from uh, the Tomb. Cheetah I, was I mean, I grew up about 20 minutes from uh, Iggy Pop in Ypsilanti, Michigan. And between them and the MC5, they're finally getting the recognition yeah. that they deserve. The Stooges, Iggy, and, uh, you know, then everybody just sort of picked up that sound and rehashed it, redid it, and did it on bigger labels and with bigger producers. And it's like, oh, I'm sure the Misfits, if you interviewed them, they would probably say uh, something about the Stooges or Iggy Pop, you know. Sure. Well, and I mean, there weren't that many years apart. They're they're contemporaries of each yeah. Other. You know, Iggy was putting out. By the time he ended up with Bowie in the late seventies, he was put, putting out like legitimate more punk new wave. Lust for Life was coming out around that time, um, but that's that early grungy power chord. And now I want to be your dog stuff that everybody says. Oh yeah, that's it, man. You know, that predates the Ramones, you know, which oh, yeah. Ramones are great at marketing. They had a good look. Um, but even the sound, you know, a lot of those punk bands, they all had very different sounds. The Sex Pistols didn't really sound uh, anything like the Ramones. But no. They, but they certainly have the same uh, speed well, and brevity. Although the Ramones played a lot faster than yeah. the Sex Pistols did. That, that's a good Sex point. Sex Pistols had the attitude. And yeah, they, had they had the attitude and the... Uh, the snarl yeah. and the, you know. The damned had their own thing going on. The, the reckless abandon, you know, which is like, oh, wow, you know. This is actually yeah. in this first. Yeah, I, I don't. In the system. Yeah. I don't know. I mean, I'm sitting at about probably 
three or four bucks on it. I don't think it's anything. It's not no, extraordinary. No, no. It's it's a buck ninety nine. Okay, cool. I'm just seeing if the color makes sense. Yeah. That was the only one I saw without a sticker. So whoever's doing your labeling is doing a good job. <laughs> Yeah, I think I got enough footage for a full episode. Just that guy coming in, I zoomed in on the clown, you know. You get this random customers just telling stories about some crazy movie, you know. that That's the, <laughs> uh, you know, these, these YouTube channels are getting so scripted and they're getting so set perfect that, you know, I, I said, I'm not going to script anything. I'm just going to do it on the fly and it's going to be authentic. And that's what people like about it. Well, and the people who came in, I don't think they knew you were filming. No, yeah. and, and and I'm not going to show their face. So there's just some anonymous voice coming out of the wall, you yeah. know. And uh, but when he said, "I said clown," I zoomed in on the clown, <laughs> and I'm like, "Okay, this is just too good." Some guy starts talking about a clown, <laughs> like that will be the hit of the episode, you know. The records were good, but when that guy started talking about the clown, I'll get like 20 comments, you know. It's amazing what people comment on. I don't get out here that often, so when I do, I'll try to stop by. So where to next? Have you been doing um, the whole route, or are you well, going to be out this way? Well, I, I, I go out a lot to Region Records over in Highland. Um, I've been Chicago. I've done episodes in Indianapolis. I've done four or five episodes in Florida. I did episodes out at Red Rocks in Colorado, Twist and Shout Records. I did an episode in Hawaii. I did an episode in France. Uh, I've done an uh, episode down at Jack White's uh, place in Detroit. What record store in Hawaii, by chance? Um, it's uh, on the north side. It was a little ukulele. It, it was a ukulele store. Oh, okay. Yeah, what was the one you were talking about? Hungry the, Ear. My wife. Yeah, the, the bookstore? I, I, it's Hungry Ear Records. Hungry Ear, okay. Yeah, and I can't remember what island it was on. My wife was in we, Hawaii for a couple of weeks yeah. for work. No, it, was, was, it wasn't on our island. I had to deal... You know, a lot of times those remote locations, it's a bookstore that has records. Yeah. And so I had a situation, a ukulele store that had records. So I got some 45s from, from her. And then it was a bookstore that had records. And it was known as the far, westernmost bookstore in the United States. So I said, I, I called the episode the westernmost record store in the United States. And it worked. <laughs> and then... Um, I've been in, we got one, an episode in New Orleans. I'm going back to New Orleans end of the month. We'll do another episode there. And uh, just wherever it pops up, I'm going to shoot, uh, I'm going through Saginaw, Michigan. There's a couple of record stores up there I'm going to hit. It's the little towns that have the cool like this, that have the coolest record stores. You, you get downtown Chicago and, you know, they're okay. Um, one of the, uh, the corporate stores I, I don't even waste my time with anymore. Yeah. You know what I mean? Let me make sure I get this one. this thing. Do ever... I like everything to be trackable. <laughs> no, I hear you. You know, I, I do sell a little bit on Discogs and... You know, I, I've had it where, you know, somebody buys something. And I'm like, oh, geez, I double listed that. Sorry, dude. You know, you let them down easy. You apologize. Um, I'm going to give you a full refund. And, you know, once again, I apologize. That's happened twice. And now I've got my system down better where that doesn't happen anymore. <laughs> yeah. Because, you know, you can only get so many times where you screw up. Well, and sometimes, you know, we'll do... Um, you know, we'll do a partnership with a local brewery and we'll do vinyl night and we'll do raffles and stuff like that. Right. And then you forget to take that record out of inventory yeah. and somebody buys it online and it's like, oh. Yeah, and that's it's basically, do, but it's, yeah, it, that can happen when you have 10,000 pieces of vinyl. And it's just juggling, yep. you know, every aspect of it. Yep. The, yeah, it, it I, I, I feel your pain. But I, I own my mistakes. Yep. But, one guy said, listen, I only have two of the three records that you ordered, but I'm going to give you the two because they were like $1.99 records. 
I'm just, I go, I'm just going to ship them to you. <laughs> you can have them. I screw up. And he was thrilled. So that'll be, well, end of this month. So that'll be an episode, you know, just shooting that. And then what I do, I'll, I'll go home, I'll go through the records one by one, and then I'll have a gem of the week. Oh, nice. Where I'll break it down, like, oh, this now this came out in 1952, Jerry Lee Lewis, and this is a reissue, but it's in very good plus, and, you know, and, and I'll look it up on Discogs, and, you know, uh, this, the genre is funk soul, and the style is this, and Discogs last sold it for this, but high price, low price, middle price, um, you know, how many people want it, how many people have it. So people, then I just run that through the closing credits, you know what I mean? So that's my whole operation. And how long have you been doing it? Uh, I got 42 episodes once a week. Wow. So, so I'm getting, December it'll be a year. Yeah. And, and what started you down that path? Uh, I, I retired. My wife said, you got to find something to do with yourself. <laughs> You're driving me insane. And I love music. I grew up in Detroit. Uh, this is my retirement. Yeah, yeah, well, exactly. So it's, it's the, the same, same idea. Your toe is 1994. All right, can't beat that. There we go. Well, we are following you now. We subscribe. I appreciate that. Yeah. I really do. Um, yeah, maybe I'll get it monetized. I'm at 520 some, I think at at 1,000. They supposedly monetize you. I'm not. Oh, really? Yeah. They're ru already running commercials on my show. Oh, that's awesome. Yeah, which, but, you know, I'm, I'm pre preparing it. I'm producing it. I'm... You know, they're genius because they got other people just making their own programming. Right. They, they don't have to do anything. Right. So I don't know how much I'll make. If it, if I get 50 to to $100 a month from them, that would be cool. I think, I mean, for me, just uh, reaching the level where they will monetize. Right. I it's mean, that's, it's that's sort huge. of like, it's like a goal. And I figured if I get it monetized, uh, then I'll dump some more money in it, maybe get better production value and do a little bit more writing. Yeah. All right. Well, nice meeting you. Nice meeting you. Take care. We'll be back. All right. Thank All right. You so much. Look for this to drop a, a week from this coming Friday. I will. All Mr. right. Thank you. All right. So that was pretty cool. Um, Michigan City. It's an old town, as you can see, and uh, met the owner. So we got a little interview going there. Um, just can't beat these little small towns in the Midwest for the friendliness and uh, for the the quality of the interaction. So we're going to go uh, get adjusted and uh, we'll take it from there. All right, I got a great adjustment at this place. I'm not biased. It's uh, my son-in-law, uh, but it's very, very good and I would recommend it if you're in Michigan City. All right, back home, we had a good trip. I hit Michigan City earlier last week. I had a good trip up in Michigan and I got to Saginaw. So we're gonna go through those records and see what we got. Let's see what we got in the stack of stuff here. A nice little stack of records from Michigan City. Let's go through those first. Oh, 
All right, so this nice little shop, the guy boxed it up or bagged it up real nice. Um, Michigan City's a cool town. The name of the shop is Static Age. So you're gonna take a look at this place and they have an address on there, 621 Franklin Street, Michigan City, Indiana. Sort of a cool place. And there you go. Every time you go there, you get a couple stamps. So got a good deal there. We got some records here. We'll go through them one by one. All right, this first record, I caught my eye, Fats Domino. He's from New Orleans, and this is on Imperial, and they call it the Dark Maroon, because there's different versions of that maroon. And the Dead Wax right here pulled it up, and I really had to match this font, because there's a couple different versions of this. Uh, 1956 rock blues is the genre, rock and roll rhythm and blues, and um, it's in pretty good shape. I mean, I'm gonna give it a very good, but it's almost a very good plus. And you can tell there's some tape over the label, so I'm gonna make that in the notation. Uh, Honey Child is the B-side, not familiar with it. I probably know it once I hear it. Um, Dollar eighty-four median value, so they probably made a ton of these. But everybody knows Blueberry Hill. But if you grew up in the seventies, you know it because Richie used to sing it on sing it on uh, Happy Days every time you had a good date. So uh, definitely, I do not have this copy in my collection. I think two dollars is what he charged me. Uh, it does a high value of ten twenty-seven. So I think. This is gonna price out at higher than a $2 record. I think it's about a four or $5 record. So, number one. All right, this one caught my eye because the artwork and the name. So the English Beat is uh, a band I've seen twice. Once I saw them this year, but I saw them warm up for the police once too. They used to be called The Beat in England and they had to change it when they came to the States because what I heard is there was already a band of that name. But the artwork gave it away. So let's look it up and see what it's worth. I think it's an import. Okay, here it is, that second record. It's it's a little beat up, scuffed up. This album, or this record got played. It is from Great Britain. Very, very small print right there. You can see it. And it came out in 1981. It's that pop rock ska. Uh, I think it's off their second or third album. Uh, so it's sort of cool. To pick that up in the U.S., it's very unusual. It's a 333 median value, high value of 920. Um, I'll probably list it for sale. So, uh, very cool record. I got it for two bucks, median 333. So, um, let's see what they say to list it at. All right, I listed it for four dollars and five cents, and I bought it for a dollar ninety-nine. General rule of thumb. You know, if you're gonna sell stuff, you better at least get double what you paid for it. So, cool work, artwork. Uh, I'll probably give it a listen, and uh, who knows, maybe it'll stick around in my collection for a while. All right, the third one. Um, I might say, well, four, five bucks, but D. Clark. It's an old VJ label, and it's 383. Uh, she shows up on a lot of the lot of Northern Soul lists, and um, VJ is the label that I'm looking for the Beatles on 4.98, my my holy grail. There was only a few thousand made, and most of them got thrown away probably because it was a flop. But that's the classic VJ label from that time period, uh, originally from Gary, Indiana. The label uh, eventually ended up in Chicago, and it after the Beatles. Uh, in the, the legal battle over trying to keep them, uh, they went bankrupt. So let's look it up and see what it's worth. All right, um, it's beat up. I'm going to give it a good plus. It turns out I have the version in my hand here that doesn't have the ARP stamp. So no pressing plant symbol in the run out. So I don't have this version. I've got a couple other versions of the more common ARP stamp. Still only $2 median value, so I overpaid for it. $3.95 high value. But um, I al almost look, use it as a bookmark because I, I want to get Beatles 4 dollars so I have to get 
everything in the 300s and the 400s and the 500s and the 600s just so I can bookend it, <laughs> if that makes sense. So overpaid a little bit on this one. All right, back at it. Um, before we get to this one, which is interesting, you know, once you get locked into the soul genre, these just jump the right eye. He's got it as a very good plus. Um, you know, his rating is a little different than mine. <laughs> that is a nice, clean record. I mean, I'm not going to give it a very good plus, but I would give it a very good clean-looking record. Let's look it up. Whoa, don't drop it, right? Let's look it up and see what it's worth. All right, it turns out it's a pretty common record. Um, median value at 179, and uh, nothing really big on this that catches my eye. Funk Soul is the genre, so that's always good. And, um, you know, I've seen Gladys Knight. I saw her with the spinners. Spinners warm, warmed up uh, probably 20 years ago. And uh, I always thought she has a fantastic voice, and uh, she can really belt it out. So once again, I try to take these Motown acts and round out my whole collection of each different Motown act. So there you go. I don't have a copy of this. I'm going to add it to my collection right now. All right, this next record right here, I'll show you why it caught my eye. $2.99. Look at that. Yellow vinyl. So it's either common as hell or I just picked up a, a little gem right there. So let's look it up and see what that's all about. You don't get that every day, though. All right, there it is. It's uh, yellow vinyl. It came out in 1970. And uh, Sun Records, of course, Jerry Lee Lewis, Waiting for a Train. And I know Ryan Adams does a version of that song, I believe. So it might be an old song. Um, I don't know who wrote it, but it's sort of cool. And it came out in September 1970. Rock, folk, world, and country is the genre. Style is country rock, country, rock and roll. And medium value is $2.57, I paid $2.99. I'm sorry, make that almost $4, $3.57. High is $3.99. I think this would sell well. And I think I could probably list it for at least six bucks. That's a cool record right there. And uh, Jerry Lee Lewis, a lot of people forgot he was just still cranking it out. And he's known for early rock and roll pioneer, but he's really finished his career as a country guy. Just died a few years back. I had a chance to see him and I didn't see him. So I'm still kicking myself. 12 Want It, or 6 Want It, 12 Have It. And uh, that's a nice record. All right, this next record uh, from Static Age, I paid uh, $3.99 for it. Um, Staple Singers, I believe they're out of Chicago. And uh, sort of a family band. I think the dad's name was Roebuck. And I don't know if that's from Sears Roebuck, or, but I'm not sure on that. Um, caught my eye was Kurt Dumb, which I think is Curtis Mayfield's left label. After Sex, the title. They were sort of a quasi-religious sounding band in the beginning, so. And let's do it again. So it's mid-70s now. So let's see what this is all about. I'd give it a very good on the condition. Let's look it up. All right, so there you have it. Um, Staple Singers, let's do it again. Backed with After Sex. Um, Kurtum label, um, US release, 1975. The genre is funk soul, the style is soul. Um, it says both sides edited versions taken from the original soundtrack album, Let's Do It Again. Um, median value, 422. And this is probably very good condition-wise. So I'll probably sell it. You know, I think I should get eight bucks for it. Um, high value, fourteen forty-six. So there's some demand for it. A um, thousand ninety-five have it. One hundred and eighty-one not want it. So you look at that ratio. Um, I like this record. I think it's a good investment. All right, I listed it for eight bucks. Um, so Discog said to sell it for seven sixty-six, but I paid three ninety-nine. So I'll get double my money. It might sit in my collection for a while, but 
I think that's gonna age really, really well. We got one left. You know, the small hole means that's probably a British import. You, you know I love the pretenders. Stop your st sobbing with the weight. Let's look at this one up. All right. <laughs> Turns out I, I have this record, but um, it's definitely worth what I paid for it. Uh, median value is $4.19, I paid $3.99. Um, I don't have the picture sleeve on this one, but there's a lot of great information on here. You can see uh, Stop Your Sobbing is an old Kinks song. So there's Ray Davies, uh, produced by Nick Lowe. And if you read the fine print, you can see the year and the that it's from Great Britain. And the weight is a great uh, B-side, you know it. If you're familiar with the Pretenders and their first couple albums, you'll know that song. So um, definitely a good buy there. And uh, just for to import this, it's like 20 bucks. You know, you can get it in the US probably, but you know, what are the chances? Let me check that. All right, Michigan City, cool little town, tons of potential. They're building a new train station. They're double tracking into Chicago so you can get to and from in less than an hour on the train. And Static Age, what a cool little shop that was. I recommend definitely uh, checking it out. And it's got an artsy section and, and some jewelry and a crazy clown in the corner. And I got these seven records. So uh, I'm gonna total them up and give you some info. And I'm gonna pick out one that was my gem of the week. Cheers. All right, Detroit Bob, the name of the show is Rockmine. Make sure you subscribe because I got to get a thousand subscribers to hit the mark. I'm almost already at 4,000 hours viewed and I have a quarter million views. But I'll tell you what, I paid 20 bucks for these and that's what they're worth, median value. But I think I got better than median value on my quality. So it's going to skew higher than that. But my favorite one is just this cool sun on the vinyl, on the yellow vinyl. I mean, how cool a record is that? So Jerry Lee Lewis, he's an American treasure. He was one of the famous five that were on Sun Records out of Memphis. Of course, you had Elvis, you had uh, Jerry Lee Lewis, and you also had, well, Johnny Cash, and you had Roy Orbison. Let's not forget Charlie Rich, right? And I think Carl Perkins too, right? Who am I forgetting? But uh, what, a, what a great label that was. And uh, Waiting for a Train, backed with Big Legged Woman. So right there, Gem of the Week, Detroit Bob. We'll see you next week. We are going to go to Saginaw. So let's check out these little towns in the Midwest and dig up some more gold. We'll see you then.